I know there are a ton of you skillers or just casual players out there who would love to get into some bossing or PVM and you guys may just not know how. I'm going to show you my top 10 favorite easy bosses to kill where obviously the reward are going to be some good loot or a chance to get your first pet. One of the easiest bosses that anyone and their mom can do is the giant mole. This guy's a joke. He's been in the game for so long. What I usually do is daroxing him, so DHing. So you can bring DH, which actually tanks in price because they did get rid of deathmatching. So this is at about 4 mil now, down from I think 7 or 8. Bring your Darox. I would bring a Berserker Ring if you have it. Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, a uh, Blessing, Fire Cape, and the Amulet of Fury. You can always switch these things out. So if you don't have the Barrow's Gloves, you can bring Rune Gloves. You could bring Combat Bracelet. Uh, if you don't have the Fire Cape, you can bring the Mythical Cape from Dragon Slayer 2 if you beat that. Or you can bring the RD Cloak. Then if you don't have a Fury, it's a couple mil. It's not that bad, so you guys should be able to buy that. You get the Amulet of Glory. Uh, if you don't have the Berserker Ring, bring a Warrior Ring, and so on. So what you're going to want to do is teleport to Faldor and head over to the Faldor Garden over any one of these holes here and bring a Spade with you. So I'm bringing a couple Super Combat Potions, a couple Stamina Potions, a bunch of Restores. If you have a Cannon, it's about 800k, buy a Cannon. Bring some cannonballs, either bring a rock cake or the locator orb, and that will get your HP down. So you're going to want to be at 1 HP this entire fight. So I'm at 1 HP now. Uh, some teleports out of there. You could bring a spec weapon. I'm bringing a DDS and some runes for high alking. If you do not have the eternal fire lit down here, which you may not, uh, do bring a light source and possibly a tinderbox. Okay, so the mole has a very easy mechanic. All you're going to do is pray melee. So we got an empty world here. Set up the cannon. Drink the super combat potion. Pray melee. And piety. And we just smack him. Hopefully we can... Alright, let's go uh, get the cannon fired up here. There we go, 96. So if you don't have the Faldor hard diary completed, you won't have the mole locator. Um, so that's kind of a pain in the ass. So you just got to run around and look for the yellow dot on the mini-map. Alright, let's see if we can finish off the first kill. 43. And as you see, he does drop a mole skin and a mole claw every single kill. So that, at least, is going to get you almost 20k. And mine are noted because I do have the Faldor hard diary completed. And so I do just want to show you the Faldor Shield 3, what the benefits are. So once we enter into his cave, you see there's a blinking red arrow pointing directly where the mole is. And again, you don't need anything too fancy to kill this guy. Like I said, he's just melee, so you can bring proselyte, you can bring a whip, you can bring an abbey dagger, rune gloves, mythical cape, put it all on, put prey melee, go up there, spec the shit out of him. And he won't never hit you. Now, Scurrius is the first low-level monster that Jagex introduced into the game with prayer switching. So you'll go from all three prayer styles, mage, range, and melee. Again, a very basic setup is needed here. I'm bringing, for example, dragon plate legs. You can bring proselyte if you want. You can bring granite plate legs if you have it. Dragon boots. The barrel's gloves, obviously. Bring rune gloves if you don't have it. Dragon defender. You can bring... Rune Defender, if you have that, a Rune Kite Shield, a Granite Kite Shield, anything, anything, guys. Amulet of Fury, Amulet of Glory, the Obby Cape. You know, very basic budget setup here, guys, and I will get some kills. So drink that, and we're going to hop over into the private instance. I'm just going to start off by praying melee. If you don't have Piety, don't worry about it, guys. Just use Ultimate Strength or whatever. So basically, you just want to stay from the Falling Rocks. And his prayer switching. I did make a guide on AFKing this. If you're interested in that, you could AFK him. If you have the budget for it, it was about 23 mil. So, oh, okay, so that's a range. See right there, that's range. When he does electricity, that'll be mage. So he eats up here in the corner. Mage, there you go. Just switch over to mage. That's electricity. He spawns some rat spawns. They'll hit ones on you. 
Just gonna go back to praying melee. And just continue the fight with him. It's a pretty quick, easy fight. He only has 500 HP. If you do miss a prayer, that's alright. It's not gonna hit too high on you. So those shit clouds are range. Okay, just complete the combat task. You won't get a ton of money here, unfortunately. He doesn't good, give good drops, but it's good for learning. Next is Barrows. Again, very basic setup I'm going to be using here. The easiest way to get here is by using the Barrows Teleports. So you can buy off the Grand Exchange. I have it placed in my house, so we're going to go to my POH real quick. Six hills here. You're going to want to bring a Mage range and melee setup. So I'm using a very budget, basic Mage setup here with the Mystic Robes. I do have some melee armor on just for that extra strength bonus i'm using the unholy book which gives you offensive bonuses in every combat style i do have the occult necklace again bring a glory if you don't have that if you can't buy it um you can bring a trident of the swamp trident of the seas i have the imbued god cape if you don't have that just bring the god cape and so on so i'm bringing blowpipe and my backpack and then defender and a whip so I put little tile markers down here for each boss so so I know, so I don't have to think too much. So this guy uses melee, so I'm going to pray melee and just go in here and use mage on him. So once you have a spade, just dig on the hole right here, any one of the holes, but I start here, disturb the crypt, and just fight, and that's it. This is the whole battle, just pray melee, very easy. This isn't an in-depth guide, guys, so this is just a quick walkthrough about all the bosses. I'm just going to kill them real quick, go to the next one. And if you have Runelight active, you'll see up here in the top left, I've killed one, which is the Darok boss. I got 18% so far. Again, we want to hit that 86% goal marker. So just dig on the next one, disturb the crypt. Okay, so we're not going to go in there yet. Okay, I'll explain that in a second here. So, of the six bosses, one of them will randomly spawn in the maze. And you won't be able to kill them up here. So, we're going to continue killing the remaining bosses. And then we're going to head back to that crypt. I know it's a little confusing. We're going to head back to that crypt and go through the maze. And kill the last boss and get our reward. Okay, and now that we've killed all of the bosses that we can up here, we're going to head back to this one where he did not spawn and we're going to enter the crypt so now you're in this maze there's no map but if you have rune light enabled uh it's fairly easy to go through so in each room three of the doors you will not be able to open and once you open a door a monster will spawn and for this case i'm going to kill one worm and two skeletons plus the Varek boss and that's going to get us close to the 86 percent that we want uh, in this case, sometimes the boss will actually spawn when you're going through the maze. So in this case, you can just kill him. Somehow he actually got stuck. That's weird. Okay, I've never seen that before, but that's pretty sick. So we're going to kill him, and then we're going to continue the maze. We're going to look for a couple more skeletons, and then we're going to look for the entrance into the reward chest. It's so like that room up there. I can enter into that door to go to the chest. So we're going to head over to there. And that was the last monster. Now we're at 86.3%. So that's great. So we're going to head over to the chest. Just going to run through it. If you do not have rune light enabled, this might be brutal. So it tells you which to click on, which puzzle. And go to the chest. You probably need to clear some inventory space. Collect a reward. Search. And there you have it. Not a ton of money, but it's, oh, 61k, so that's actually pretty good. Alright, our next boss is the Dagonoth Kings. Again, very basic budget mage setup. We're going to be killing Dagonoth Rex, which he only does melee, so we're going to use mage against him. Um, again, bring some prayer potions, stamina potions, an anti-poison. You will need a rune throwing axe. Hopefully you have the Fremic Trials completed because you will need your pet rock. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, getting up here, I guess you could use the redirection teleport from your house portal to Fremnic area. Or fairy code ring AJ, what is that, AJP? AJR. 
and then head over to the top left and go to Waterbirth Island. Head around the island into this cave entrance. Everything looks intimidating if you've never done PVM before in bossing. Uh, these guys will hit on you, so just pray accordingly. You might want to turn your auto retaliate off for a moment. And we're going to head over to the east northeastern side. And this is where the pet rock comes in handy. You have to place him down on that pad, standing on the other one, and then it opens the door. Head through here. This is why I have to bring a stamina potion. Do you have to drink that? Okay, now switch over to your rune throwing axe. Come over to here, and you will use your special attack on the middle door, I guess. Door support, yep. And that drops them down. Head down the ladder. And just pray up, yep, see? You gotta be fast with the prayers here. I don't remember what everybody uses. I think this is range here. I think these guys might be melee. And you can put some tile markers down. I kind of know the route by heart. But it's a convoluted maze. It's pretty annoying. Okay, finally, and once you get to the bottom here, don't head right into the ladder. I'm getting destroyed. So yeah, don't be stressed. Just bring a lot of food, and you'll be fine. Step over this real little root here and into this corner. It's a little safe spot, and you can actually peek and see if there's any players down here. There's no one down there. Okay, so that's perfect. What you want when you go down this ladder here is for the bosses to be not aggro to you and kind of off in the distance so they don't see you so that you can run around down there and get to the safe spot to kill Rex. I will say you will take quite a lot of damage until you get the hang of this. So it might take you a couple tries. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, see how the bosses are off in the distance? They're not paying attention to us. So you just want to run all the way around without getting their attention. Go, 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 go all the way around. Just keep Prey Mage on because these idiots hit you. And the safe spot is right around here in this corner. So there's Rex. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to lure him. You can bring a crossbow because it's for long range. Try to lure him over here. And he will, oh, this is where your anti-poison comes into play. Okay, so here it is. So this is where you want to stand. And then you can just kill him from here. Bring adequate food and prayer pots if you plan on staying here a while. You do need the anti-poison and stamina potion because there was a lot of running like I showed you guys earlier. And it's very easy from here. You just, you just hit him. Pray mage from these guys because they'll hit you. And as you see, without the rares, the loot is not great. But for some reason, the Dagonoth King Bones, these are really expensive. They're 13k each. So three kills, almost 40k. These next few bosses here are going to be a little bit stressful as they are in the wild. So we will be doing the King Black Dragon, KBD. Again, sort of a budget setup here with the Ancient God, Dehyde. If you don't have that, use Black Dehyde and so on. You do need a Dragon Fire Shield or some sort of anti-fire shield. I have the Dragon Hunter Crossbow, so just bring a Rune Crossbow if you have that. Really budget again, Snakeskin Boots, Barrows Gloves, uh, the Ava's Accumulator. Bring Diamond Bolts Enchanted, Dragon Bolts Enchanted, Amulet of Glory, the Neonazi Helm, and Neznot Helm, however the hell you pronounce that. You can get here by rubbing the Burning Amulet to the Lava Maze, or an Obelisk, Set Destination, and you're going to go to 44 Wilderness. Let's see our risk, 425k. So 75k, I mean, sorry, 75 mil. So I think that's about 70 mil. That's a few mil. Um, but we're not going to be sculled. So let's rub the burning amulet and head to the lava maze. And hopefully we don't get PK'd. Get your log out ready. Nobody is here. Head into the gate with the lesser demons. You do want extended anti-fire, uh, anti-poison, a ranging pot, and some super restores as he does lower your stats. So we're going to head in here. I am going to pray melee. I'm going to go up to him 
because he'll use more melee attacks versus his other attacks, which will hit on you. Put on my best range prayer. I have rigor. If you don't have rigor, you can use ego eye and so on. And the battle is pretty straightforward. He just blows his fire attacks on you, his poison attack on you, and his stat draining attack on you, and then along with his melee attack. So I'd rather him do more melee attacks as I have prey melee. So he will not hit on you. So fight's pretty straightforward. He drops two dragon black dragon hides every kill, along with bones and then random items. So I just got like a rune longsword. You can pick everything up. You can bring a looting bag and head outside to the lever and fill it up. Uh, just bring a full inventory of food, an adequate amount of pots, and and just rinse and repeat this process too. Again, it's another straightforward boss. You don't have to do any prayer switching. So it's pretty easy. All right, for this next one, we're going to be doing Crazy Archaeologist. He is in a low level of the wilderness. So we're going to use the Cemetery Teleport, which is the quickest way to get out here. Head south to the ancient, can't pronounce that, but the ancient mage spell, uh, which teleports you out there to the ruins. So put on some basic budget mage gear. So I just have Mystics on, God Cape, Book of Darkness. I'm bringing the Ivan's Staff. So you can use the spell Ivan's Blast, which is one death rune in five fire runes. Head out here, just look for him. There he is, level 204. So we can tag him, pray, range, and just move out of the way when he does that spell. Because it will hit on you, pretty crazy. And you're just going to sit here, thank him, tell him like this. He does not drop a pet, unfortunately. Um, the GP isn't crazy. But again, this gets you to understand some mechanics in the game of just moving out of the way. From that spell you see that otherwise it'll hit pretty high on you and the loot here isn't anything crazy four grimy dwarf weeds 8k our next boss is another wildy boss and the last wildy boss which is the chaos fanatic he does drop a pet which is pretty cool he is a little bit in the deep wilderness so that's that 44 destination we were going to go to for kbd uh, do bring some prayer potions, uh, range potions, stamina potion. I'm bringing a couple brews in case I have to brew up. And pies. Do not bring regular food. He does take your armor off, so you do need to keep all your inventory slots full. You can bring a looting bag, which I forgot to bring. And some budget range gear. I'm sticking with the budget gear for you guys. PK skull active. We got only a mil on us. So let's head out there. Teleport to destination 44. Drink our ranging potion. And he is just south a little bit. You'll see him right here, level 202. And we just go to town on him. He does have the same attack style as the last guy we were fighting. So just move out of the way for that special attack there. You will get PK'd here. This is a PKing hotspot because you're in between the K uh, KBD layer and the Chaos Temple, the Chaos Altar, sorry. So just move out of the way for that spell, and you will never get hit from him. Pray Mage, put your Rigor on or your Eagle Eye and so on. If you have the Magic Shortbow, you can spec them. 225 HP. The fight should last you about a minute with this setup. And if you do it perfectly, you should take no damage. What did he drop? 3k. So nothing crazy. He does drop the pet. So that's pretty sweet. So after the Perilous Moons quest, you can kill these same three bosses again. It's just like Barrows. So the way to get here is the Quetzal. Head down the mountainside into the entrance of the mountain. And just head right up. Again, all you're going to need is some very basic budget gear. As you see here, the Berserker Ring, Dragon Boots, Dragon Plate Legs. This is like the bare minimum, guys. The Fire Torso, Dragon Defender, or Rune Defender, Amulet of Fury or Glory, uh, 
Netazam Helm, uh, the Abbey Dagger, a Whip, and the Cudgel. So these are the three melee weapons you'll be using. Only melee, guys. So that's why these bosses are great. You don't need any supplies. You're just going to get the supplies from in here. Head up here. A cup of tea. Recharge your energy. Okay, so now we're going to take some fishing supplies and some herb lore supplies. And we're going to head north into this entrance here. We're going to take this berry spawn, two of them, crush them, and put it into the potion. And that is our prayer potion. And then we're going to head back and we're going to fish. And once you collected a full inventory, you can come over here and just cook the fish. It's pretty sick. You cook two at a time, so it's wicked fast. Look at that. Imagine if you could do that in game. You have 99 in no time. And then we're going to drop the big fishing net. So now you got your supplies. You got your prayer potion, your combat potion. It's all in one. And you're going to come over here. I have stab on. Pass through the entrance. And here we are. So we're at the first boss, which is the Eclipse Moon boss. So for here, I'm going to use the Abbey Dagger. I have it on stab. I drink that. These are typeless attacks. So protection prayers do not matter. There's plenty of guys out here. That basically, just step on the moon that's shining and just attack them. There's three phases. He will pull you in the center. And just click on wherever he is as fast as you can. So you take no damage and so you do damage to him. And just go right back on the tile. It's lit. It's lit. There's 100 HP left. Hopefully we can kill him before his next phase. That'd be great. Alright, so for this one, just stay behind this moon the whole time and you will not get hit. Over to the light. And just continue your attack. Nice zeros. I love hitting the zero. It's probably my favorite number to hit. A one. One is my second favorite number to hit. 23. He's dead. He's down. So that's the Eclipse Moon. Now we're headed into the Blue Moon. Same thing. Stand on the lit orb. You just hit him every few attacks. This rock will appear. And you have to kick it or glacier or whatever, the one that's highlighted. So you see this one's blue. Step away. Go back and kick it. So that was one special attack. Oh, jeez. This guy's freaking destroying me. So, we have to go and light these brazer, brazers, brazers, <laughs> and if you get hit by these tornadoes, it turns off your run, see there, and damages you a little bit. Hell, I can't avoid them, I don't really care, I just plow through them, and you just continue the process. Big hits, wow. And hopefully, yeah, you kill him before his next phase. So that's the blue moon. Blood moon boss, which is a slash weapon. Again, just stands on the lit tile and just attack him. The piety on. The special attacks are kind of annoying. Blood blobs. So this is like the theater of blood. I don't know if you guys have done that. Just stay off of them and just continue your attack. And we have the stupid dog attack, which I hate. Which literally does nothing. But you just gotta time it good. Go over to the tile. And just beat the shit out of him. And once you finally kill the last boss, you just, if it's the Blood Moon boss, you just head south into the reward room. Just like the quest, once in the reward room, claim your chest. 31 KC so far. Let's put it in the inventory. We'll show you what it looks like. 
it's not great GP. If you get a unique, that's awesome because the uniques are pretty high price right now. 72K. So it's actually pretty good. You use zero supplies, guys. Keep that in mind. This is pure profit. Now, another sick, easy boss I like to kill is Skatizo. He's found right here. We're going to teleport into the heart with the Xerix Talisman. He's found in the heart of Arceus. Right here, when you investigate the statue, the catacombs of Karin. So you might have picked up these totem pieces, the top, middle, and bottom totem piece. If you put them together, it gives you the dark totem. And that can be used here on the altar. And for this boss, all you're going to do is pray mage. Bring some prayer potions or super restores. Bring a range in potion and bring a stamina potion and bring the arc light. This is very important here. And I'll tell you why when we get in there. But yeah, just set your quick prayer to pray mage and rigor if you have so. And just use the totem piece on the altar here in the middle. Teleport us, us inside. Um, I forgot to mention, do bring your best range gear. I'm just bringing what I have, which is obviously really good. It's a uh, armadillo and armadillo crossbow, twisted buckler, my Ava's assembler, uh, and a little fury, Pegasian boots, archer's ring, barrel's gloves. Um, I know you guys may not have any or all of this stuff, but just bring the best range gear you have. Um, this is an easy boss. Look at this. He doesn't even hit on you. He's already down almost half his HP. In a second here, you are going to see these four altars light up. And that's what you're going to use the arc light on just to one hit them. They have 100 HP. And at some point he will spawn three little minions. So you see that thing going up right now. Oops. You're just going to go over to it with the arc light and bash it here in a second. Oh, yep, there's his minions just spawned in. But once you have, I think it's one of these altars active, the, the damage you do on them is reduced significantly. So that's why you do got to get them down as best you can here. So I'm just running around right now, knocking them down, and then I'll go back to hitting him. And that's basically the entire fight. And he always drops a hard clue scroll for you guys that love doing clues. Sometimes he'll drop an elite as well. And as you see, he just went down there. We'll see what our loot is. It's usually pretty decent. Dark Totem. I thought that was the freaking pet. Oh my god. And yeah, sometimes you can get uh, a Dark Totem so you can have another go at him. And the last boss on our list is Hispori. So you might have gotten some Hispori seeds and not know what to do with them on your farming runs. And you need 65 farming in order to kill this guy. So again, just bring your best range setup that you have. Or melee, like this guy. But I like range better. And drink your ranging potion. Drink your antidote. And we're going to go ahead and harvest him. And he has these flowers that you have to hit first before you can hit him. I'm just going to pray me. Uh, I guess I'll pray range, I think. And then you can just start hitting him. And there will be a couple times during the fight where you will have to kill the flowers again in order to kill him. But it's a very quick fight. The drop you could possibly get is the bottomless compost bucket going for about 800k right now. Or obviously the pet. Which that would be awesome to get so just throw over to these flowers hit them back to hitting him he's one more special attack he'll tangle you up and you can't move or hit him for a few seconds and once he's dead you can harvest it and i think you get like fourteen thousand xp let me see twelve thousand twelve thousand six hundred and we'll check the loot nothing great Oh, actually, that's really good. 80k. Damn. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge shout out to Alan at OSRS Bricks for partnering with me and my channel. Be sure to check them out, and I'll put some information down below in the description. That's OSRSBricks.com.
Use code TKT for 5% off your entire order.